What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I have Mackenzie here today. Mackenzie, how's it going? Hi, good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. And it's funny, we had a little mix up as far as the time. I'm on the East Coast. She's on the West Coast. I said 7 p.m. We agreed to that, but I didn't say Eastern time like I usually do. So I'll take the heat out. That's my fault. 100% my fault. <laughs> and now we're here at 11.42 on the East Coast. And three hours earlier than that on the West Coast. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is an interesting one, people, because Mackenzie's not a horror fan. Ah. But the reason for that. She does this awesome art, though. That's amazing. Special stuff. I found her on Facebook and I was like, I got to get her on for an interview because I love this kind of stuff. Anybody who uh, I think it's amazing. But I'm going to let you, whatever you want to tell, go ahead and say as far as why you're not really into horror like that. <laughs> whatever you want to talk about with that, it's your, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like eventually I am going to have to get more into horror. Um, so I actually just moved out here to Los Angeles six months ago okay. and I was immediately thrown into the film industry. Like I, I consider myself very fortunate because I've gotten to work on several features within the short amount of time I've been here, but turns out everybody in the film industry is very into horror. So I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, no, I've got it. I've just got to bite the bullet on that. But um, yeah, I, like grew up in a haunted house so um for me like i get absolutely terrified like watching certain movies and um it's more like the like the ghost stuff like or like demonic stuff like really it freaks me out like anything like realistic like one of my movies that i really like is uh is it the strangers or strangers strangers there's the strangers and the strangers play pray at night those are both good Okay, yeah, the one, you know, where it's like a couple in the cabin or whatever, like that kind of stuff doesn't freak me out, even though it's totally realistic. Mm -hmm. But like the, uh, like the grudge was one that always like freaked me out. And um, like, I just can't, I like, I, I tried to watch, oh my God, I tried to watch uh, a little bit of The Conjuring. I, I did watch it, but I had my eyes closed half of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I, I swear, that kind of stuff just absolutely terrifies me. But like I said, I grew up in a haunted house, so I had like a lot of crazy experiences. So um, I don't know like how much you want to hear, but I've definitely got stories. <laughs> if you and, I mean, any, anything you, you feel comfortable talking, like I, I've, I don't, I've never had these experiences. Like I've never had that happen. So I don't know how, I don't know how that feels for someone to, you know, discuss it. If it's uncomfortable to bring up, you know what I mean? Oh. I'm saying like whatever you're comfortable talking about with that haunted house. Yeah, know? no, um, I definitely don't mind talking about it. Cause I, I'm not kidding. So wait, let me just ask you, like, um, do you believe in like ghosts and stuff? Have you ever had an experience yourself? 
I've never had an experience, but like, it's one of those things. Part of my mind, I don't believe, but the other part of my mind, it's like, there's certain things I won't do to find out if it's real or not. Like, for example, a Ouija board, I won't. No, I'm not messing with. Oh yeah, no, never a good idea. (laughs) And like, like there's there's haunted places every pretty much in every single town. There's there's a haunted you know house or whatever asylum. And I've had friends say like, hey, you know, Aaron, you should go check because because I'm a horror podcaster, I'm a horror fan. I should go check out these haunted spots. I'm like, it's not the same. There's a difference between watching a horror movie and then putting myself in a crazy ass situation, a possible crazy ass situation. And I also think if it is real and if it attaches to me, that's not the type of stuff I want to bring to my household. No. Watch it on the movies, watch it on TV and, you know, go from there with it. So I guess I believe in it some, but at the same time, it's, I guess I have to see it to believe it, but I don't want to see it to believe it. I guess, I guess it would be kind of weird, like to believe in it if you haven't experienced anything. I'm, I have experienced so many different situations with that stuff that like paranormal stuff that I just, it's like hard for me to imagine that it's not like, Mm -hmm. but you know, um, I don't know. So we moved into this house when I was in kindergarten. So I was five and, uh, I don't know. We had just like several crazy things happen over the years. Like it was one of those houses, like you'd walk into and you could feel like a bad energy, bad presence. Like there was something like not good there. And I remember like little things would happen. Like, like my dad one time saw me or he thought it was me run behind his chair when he got home and he was like, you know, Mackenzie, like, come and give me a hug. Tell me hi. You know, and I wasn't listening and he went behind the chair to like, you know, get me Mm -hmm. and no one was there, you know, so he did see like a little girl. Um, and then my personal experience that I had was um, I, I was sleeping in our guest room and it was right in front of our stairway. And the stairway was like anything from downstairs would echo really badly in that, that stair hallway. And um, I remember laying there at like two or three in the morning and everyone was already asleep, but I could hear my little brother screaming from downstairs And, you know, I already knew the house was haunted, so I was pretty freaked out. And I I just, like, laid there kind of frozen, um, but I kept hearing him scream over and over. And so I kind of was like, okay, I need to get up and and make sure he's okay. So I I got out of the room, and I stood at the top of the stairs, and I wanted to just see if I could hear it one more time. And if I did, I was going to go downstairs. And and then my little brother walks out of his room and just asks me why I – I was screaming. So I heard him screaming downstairs and he heard me, but absolutely no one was downstairs. So yeah, so that was, I I do remember that. Um, the, this one is kind of crazy. So, uh, my mom, I remember like I was, I was in bed and I heard my mom scream from her room. Mm -hmm. And again, it was just kind of one of those things. Like I was always terrified in that house. So I, I didn't get up and do anything. My dad, I think came to check on me and I was like, no, I'm fine. Um, but I guess the next morning my mom told me she screamed because she woke up and there was like a man standing next to her bed and she closed her eyes, opened them again. He was still there. So she pulled the covers over her head screamed and waited like two minutes and then when she pulled the covers back um from her head he was gone but like what's really scary is that uh she said he had a top hat on and like we didn't realize this till like a couple years ago I think it was my mom or my dad one of them was listening to the radio and they were talking about this demon that like visits people that wears a top hat I guess it's like an and like a thing like I don't know and it was so crazy I was just talking to my niece today about some of her experiences that she's had like paranormal stuff and she mentioned that in her house um that my sister lived in uh that she saw a man with a top hat as well so I'm like oh that's so creepy but um yeah so for me like it was like and that's just like some some stories like I've had stuff happen like 
in other houses, not even just that house, um, that have been kind of crazy. Like my parents just built a brand new house a few years ago and I lived with them for a year last year. And like weird things would happen. Like the lights would flicker, nothing crazy though. Um, mm -hmm. but I remember one day, uh, I was, my dad was out of town and he had come back home and we were meeting up in a different city. And so when we met up, my dad was like, wait, so you weren't at the house when I was, when I was like picking this stuff up. And I was like, no, I was already in Denver. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't at the house at all when you were there. And he was like, okay, well that's weird because I saw a woman walk down to the basement and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um, he like, I also had like, this was the same basement and this was after my lights had been flickering. I'm like taking photos, like Snapchat filters. And uh, it only pops up like a filter, like the ears and nose and whatever. If mm -hmm. it detects some facial recognition, right? Yeah. Well, I'm like up against the black background in those pictures that you have posted. So there's no like way to see a face out of that. Um, but sure enough, like a, a pair of <laughs> ears and a nose pops up right, right on my shoulder <laughs> in the picture with me. <laughs> great <laughs> but no we've died you know and then there's even been circumstances where like a friend and I like we were this one is weird to me because this is like there's no way that both of us heard this and like it wasn't it was just the craziest thing like I was helping a friend move this was years ago but I, I was helping him move and um his sister was asleep. She was supposed to be helping us pack. So we were a little pissed off and we were like, okay, we're going to get some like pots and pans and wake her up and make her help us pack. <laughs> and, uh, so we go in there and we've got our pots and pans at the same time. We literally both stopped because some voice, some male voice, it didn't even say stop exactly it just said something loud enough and to the effect of like stop that it like stopped us both completely in our tracks and then we were just like like it was just the craziest thing it was just this voice out of like nowhere like basically screaming at us telling us like quit like no more like but it wasn't even like an actual I, I couldn't even tell you what word it was that he said but it was like so crazy him and I stopped at the exact same time so Oh yeah. Horror kind of gets to me a little bit like when it comes to that stuff. Cause I get just so terrified from the, all that. So mate. Oh, okay. So with horror, it's mainly the, like you said, the paranormal stuff that really gets to you is by like slashers don't bother you. Yeah. I, yeah. That actually is pretty accurate. And I think I haven't watched many slashers because I've always thought it might bother me, but like, um, yeah, it's really not that bad. Like, I ended up watching, um, like, the new It, like, not the second one, but the first one, and it was pretty horrifying, but <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't totally bad. I'm kind of trying to, like, make myself see if I'm going to like um, maybe, like, some of the old school ones, like Halloween. Like, I haven't ever seen any of those. Really? I think I can handle them, honestly. <laughs> I, uh, I think you'd do fine with that. I mean... At the very least, maybe a jump scare here and there will get you, like in the Halloweens, the Friday the 13th, and the um, Nightmare on Elm Streets, but they're not really that scary. But I, I, I understand where you're coming from, though, and I see why you do have that fear. It makes plenty of sense, because you're like, I've really dealt with this crap, so this is just going to yeah. be something more. Yeah, um, but I will say, I'm, I'm kind of weird when it comes to makeup, because, okay, so, like, if I was to, like, I love special effects, uh, as you know, mm -hmm. um, if I'm, like, <laughs> watching, like, something gory on a movie or television, it grosses me out. Real life, I cannot do blood or gore, but something about me working on that stuff, like, I love it, it's my favorite, like... <laughs> I guess I guess it kind of makes sense because it's like I'm there and I know, but it's like even though I know in films it's like totally fake, for whatever reason it's like I get so grossed out. <laughs> really, Re that, yeah, that, that's thing. the that's the part that's 
a little seems a little strange to me. Not not necessarily the realistic stuff, like seeing something in real life, blood and guts. That I get, I understand. Mm-hmm. You know, that's nasty. But seeing it in a movie, it bothers you. But at the same time, you're the same person who would love to be on that set making those same effects. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. I'm like, oh, so, like I I just can't look at it. But it's like I'm also like really like, wow, damn, they did a good job. Like over here, yeah. Marf. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. just kidding. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I need to watch more horror movies just even to get ideas for makeup and see some of these different characters. But it's just so scary. Like literally, The Conjuring was probably like the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that was such a see, and I really loved that movie. I thought it was an excellent, excellent movie. But I again, I understand. I was actually laughing at a lot of the movie. But again, if I dealt with all that, I probably wouldn't find a lot of stuff funny. Like the clapping game, for example, I was dying. <laughs> And I'm like, oh god, oh god, like got it stuck in my head. <laughs> and yeah, I, I again, I love the genre. Slasher is my favorite genre. I'm getting more into paranormal movies though, just because I guess when I was younger, especially like in my childhood age, slasher was like the easiest things to get your hands on for one. And then anytime a paranormal type or exorcist type would come up, because I wasn't born around when exorcist came out, the movie seemed kind of boring to me. And I never, you know, and then I never experienced anything like that. I, I appreciate it. And I love it and enjoy it more now as an adult. But you know how it is as a kid. There's just certain things you like and then that's it. There's no if and, or buts. There's no checking it out. It's just, boom, this is what I like. This is what I'm going to watch. Yeah. But as far as like the special effects and makeup, I would definitely say you can get some cool ideas and even make them into their own, incorporate into your own ideas from watching a lot of, old 80s horror movies because that's where they really did a lot of the practical effects and the awesome makeup another one is um terrifier which is on netflix now it's oh okay movie. i don't know if you're scared, afraid of clowns or not he is a creepy clown no i don't have a problem with clowns <laughs> it's, a, it's awesome it's a real dark creepy movie but just the special effects in that movie is so amazing i think you'd appreciate it for that and i would love to check that out Maybe it'll help you with your fears of watching certain horror movies. If you kind of watch it, it's like, okay, just look at the practical effects and this. look at the special effects. This is amazing. I, I know it's not real. Yeah. And maybe that'll help. I don't know, but it's just, it's one of those genres where for me, I, I feel like it's the best genre. I love it because it can go, I feel it can go in any direction. And as a kid, I'd watch it for blood, guts, and boobs. As an adult, I watch it for blood, guts, and boobs. And, but also <laughs> the art of, you know the art of everything because you respect it more you appreciate it more and with me with this podcast i get to talk to cool people like yourself who do special effects and do the makeup and all this so i get a bigger a better and bigger respect for it just because i get to talk to someone who's actually like hey i got to do this i'm just like oh wow that's amazing like this stuff behind me again is freaking awesome oh thank you i appreciate that so what what got you started in doing makeup like makeup effects i don't want to be make it like a general thing where like you're just you're not just a girl but you know you're a female so females wear makeup I, I don't think it's that because this is not you don't see every female doing stuff like this at all <laughs> oh, maybe, thank maybe. yeah so um i used to uh do a lot of painting in high school okay. um i got really into that and then i just kind of started researching careers uh that would be flexible and something that I'm you know would enjoy doing and when I went to school for it I realized I actually had some talent in it because I was never like into makeup and like before uh, like when I was high school and stuff like that I didn't wear a lot of makeup like I wasn't really into it Um, so I never really thought that that's the direction I would go but I yeah I ended up being good at it and then over the last several years I've been um, like really just trying some new looks out, um, whether it just be for fun. Some of it I've done for like scholarship contests, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I think it all stems though from just like having a passion for art and like loving painting. And I don't know, it's just like a good creative outlet. Like that look you posted of the, uh, the Snow White, like, uh, which one, like, I actually dressed up for Halloween as that and went out to bars like that. And it was the craziest 
feeling because nobody knew who I was. Like nobody could tell what my face looked like under that. So it was just like the most bizarre experience to go out and like just be like a completely different person. Honestly, it's, it's just fun for me. That, no, that's really cool. That's an, that's an awesome talent. And I can only imagine how long this stuff takes to do. I can only <laughs> imagine just because like, just fe- not all again, but females that do wear makeup. Sometimes it takes them hours just to put on, I don't know what the hell they put on, but just to put on makeup, just to go out to the store or whatever versus doing something like this, which is, I think again is awesome as hell. And I feel like this is more of a head turner in a sense, because if somebody comes out dressed, you know, like the witch one you have, you did, you're going to be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> versus somebody else that's just wearing regular makeup. That's just like everybody else walking down the street. But this right here, oh, <laughs> that's, that's cool. I need to get a picture of that. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I want to try to do more stuff like that in the future. Um, it's kind of a bummer because like it's so harder to get like uh prosthetics and all the stuff supplies mm-hmm. that I make these cool looks right now but um so I've like at home I've just been painting I've been doing a lot more painting not so much special effects but a lot more like body painting because I have that at home okay um I've made some pretty cool looks in quarantine but I'm ready to like get out there and like get all my prosthetics and start making myself into some really cool stuff here in the future so oh, it'll can't. be fun <laughs> that'll be awesome to see that'll be real awesome to see so yeah I mean you know, it's cool, though, because you say you're not really a big horror fan. You do want to try to get into it. But it's cool with this, again, with your effects that you're doing at the very least, that it's just like, even if you never became a really huge fan of horror, but you respect the special effects, and like, I at least want to do that part of it. I think it's cool. And you'll put your own twist, your own touch on it, which, again, I think is just great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, um, the art aspect of it is just, like, really why I love doing what I do. You know, like, mm-hmm. it's so much fun and I I don't know I'm just it's like I haven't worked on a horror film yet I actually have some coming up this year that I'm going to be working on so that'll be really interesting to see what I think um you know I've done special effects on other films but it's been like you know some cuts bruises shot wounds stuff like that um but uh, to do a horror film is going to be like something completely different and I'm so excited and ready like you know i don't know it's it's gonna be exciting <laughs> no that's really cool and i mean that's i i'm gonna say it right now you're gonna have the most fun you ever had once you start doing once you start working with the horror stuff i'm not even talking from experience i'm just talking because i, I just love the genre so much and just i feel you can do a lot more with your with your talents in horror than you can in any other genre as well because you can literally do anything and not be wrong and someone's going to appreciate it someone's going to love it the fans are like oh wow that's cool like she did a decapitated head that's awesome that's not going to work in like a romance movie (laughs) movie. (laughs) you're right yeah and i mean it really is like the stuff that i enjoy the most like it's so crazy like when i started being a makeup artist which was like seven years ago i would never have even thought that i would be into special effects i actually only got into special effects a couple of years ago um taught myself everything as far as special effects goes i only was doing beauty makeup for the majority of my career Mm -hmm. and now it's my absolute favorite like i love it (laughs) and i think it's because like you said you have so many possibilities like you really do have the option to make like a really interesting character make something really nasty scary and honestly Like, I shouldn't say this, but it would be so cool to make a character that scares the absolute shit out of somebody like me for years to come. (laughs) That's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's what, um, as far as a horror fan, I'll say, because I don't get scared with movies anymore. There's sometimes I'll jump here and there. But as far as like horror fans, that is something we definitely look forward to is you want that memorable look that you're just like, yo, did you see that movie that Mackenzie did? that look was fucking amazing. Like that you want that iconic look. That's going to stand for the test of time. That's going to be here for like the next however many years. Right. Right. You see Freddy Krueger and even someone like me who doesn't know horror knows exactly what he looks like. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sky's the limit though. You just 
keep working at it, keep practicing at it as you do. And I, I like how you're saying you're at least at home, you're doing painting because you can't do the press sex, you're at least painting, just working on things. But I'm sure with your mind, you're coming up with some crazy ass ideas, which is always great and always healthy in my opinion. And these times though, for anybody that has like, I'll say home projects or I'll even say other podcasters, YouTubers, makeup artists, special effects artists, something that you can actually do from home if you're stuck at home, now's like the perfect time to do it. Now there's like no excuses. As long as you have, you know, you have the materials you have, whatever the case may be, even if you only have a little bit, now is a great time to just perfect something of your craft or makes do something. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, I, I've really been so thankful for this time just to be able to like work on my stuff because I'm telling you, like before this all happens, I was so busy. I was working like three to four jobs, like part time and just nonstop. And I actually hadn't done a makeup look in like six months since I moved here in Los Angeles. So I was like, this is the time, like I have time to do it, get back to doing my looks again. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been so nice. Like I forgot how much I miss doing looks all the time. And like, granted I was like busy, but it's just been nice to be able to like practice and just you know get as good as I can at what I do while I have the downtime there you go there you mm-hmm. go do you have a favorite that you've done so far as far as like a makeup that you've done on yourself so far on myself um you know I don't know that's an interesting one because even like the three pictures you have I would say those are probably some of my top um I loved the, I wish I would have had more time to do the, uh, the one with the Snow White because I I was on such a tight schedule that day. Like I had to really rush through that one, but I really loved that one. Um, and then the Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn was super fun. That actually was really one of my favorites. Um, I don't know. I just did like a slit throat look too, which was pretty fun. I just to, you know, have, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but, um, and even the heart one was pretty fun too. Like I like sculpted that hard and I don't know. I just, I have a lot of fun with like anything that has like props to like do. I enjoy making and, um, like I made that, I made the apple, I made the heart, like all of it. So I don't know anything like that. I, I have a lot of fun with. Oh, that's good, though. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> How does your family feel about it? Does, do they like it? or as far as, I, the creep, as far as the creepy stuff, though, not necessarily the pretty stuff, but, like, the blood, like, the heart one and the, the, wi- oh, this, the witch and the heart. It, it, you know, my family is super supportive. They're really – they they're huge fans of mine. They're, they love it. I will say, though, I think the goriest thing I ever had done – up until recently was that heart picture. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I did the slit throat the other day, my grandma commented and was just like, Oh man, Mackenzie, you're something else. (laughs) Like, but good job. You're talented. (laughs) My my grandma just does not know what to think about me because I don't, there's nobody in my family like me at all. Like nobody's into blood and gore and stuff scary, spooky things like, oh, and this is funny too. I think I should mention this. Well, even though I like get so scared of horror, I'm like really like squeamish. Halloween is still my favorite, absolute all time ever favorite holiday. I'm like obsessed. So I think my family just like, doesn't really know what to think of me because I am kind of like a weirdo. (laughs) I love scary. I love like, as far as I don't know, like I'll go to a haunted house, like no problem. Mm -hmm. Like movies just, I don't know. I feel like with you, just from just from listening, I could be wrong, but I feel like you're like again because you said you're not really you're you're getting into horror. I'm not even gonna say you're not into it. You're like dipping your toe into it with the movies. You'll do everything around the movies. You're dipping your toe into it with the movies because you're you're curious to watch it. And as soon as you get past that one fear part of watching a few movies, you're gonna be hooked. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be hooked because it's it started. Well, I mean, for me as a kid, I was. I'd be terrified of movies. I'd watch one of my older cousins and brother. And their rule was, depending on whose house we're staying at, if we're at my house, you know, don't wake up mom. 
for at their houses. Don't wake up so and so because we're gonna get in trouble for letting you watch these movies with us. So I would never wake them up, but I was just scared. But I always wanted to come back for more, which was it seems weird. I don't know if it's because the adrenaline rush or just because I'm doing what they're doing. You know, you're with older people as a kid. You're like, okay, they're doing this, so they're cool. So I need to be doing this too. So it may have been that. But there was a time I was watching um, Creep Show, which I highly recommend. Creep Show Part Two. The story was called The Hitchhiker, and that movie scared the hell out of me. Like I had to ask, I don't know if it was my brother or one of my cousins, to walk me to the bathroom, wait outside the bathroom while I use the bathroom, and then come back and watch the movie with them. Probably slept with the lights on, or if, you know how when you have sleepovers, you're all sleeping in like the living room anyway. Probably all slept in the living room, whatever the case may be. I, I wasn't sleeping alone, and if I was, I had a light or two on, and. But from then on, I just kept watching it more and more and more till, you know, now as an adult, I have a freaking podcast for it. And it's just, I just love the genre. And once you get into it more and meet more of the fans, you'll see how welcome and how friendly they are. Like, it's the most friendly people I've ever been around. I've been to like, I've gone to horror conventions and I've gone to comic cons. Both, both cons are welcoming. Both cons are fun. Both cons are friendly people. Comic con though, I feel like, not everybody wants to be at a comic con. Like it's just like, say either the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the children are the ones that are into that. So that's why they're going to support whoever horror complete opposite boyfriend, girlfriend, kids, everybody's really into it. So it's just a different, it's not that they're not both welcoming, just that it's a different environment because everybody wants to be there. You can just feel like as soon as you walk in there, you feel the energy. And it's for me, it's like a kid in a candy store, a kid on Christmas. Like it's just, I love it. My eyes light up. I'm running around acting all crazy. The past few cons that I've gone to, my wife's been going with us too, like with me and my brother or just me and her go. I give her my money. And I do this because, again, like a kid in a candy store or a kid in a toy store, you just start grabbing stuff and buying stuff. And then you're upset when you get to the toy you really want, but you spent <laughs> all your money. So I'm like, you yeah. hold it for me. And you know if there's something, hold it for me. You know, I get all my autographs. And if there's something you know I really, really want, I'll get it. Other than that, just hold the money. And she's like, are you? Yes. Like I had her hold the money the whole weekend just because I know how I am. <laughs> and it's just one of those things where I don't know if you've ever been to a con before, but if you ever get a chance to go to a horror convention, highly, highly recommended. Highly. As a matter of fact, for you, because you're talented, I would even say if you do paintings to sell, try to get a table and do any type of horror stuff and you definitely make some I don't know. I don't know anything about a vendor table. I think you'd make a decent profit. And I think you'd have an amazing time going either as a vendor or as a fan, just because it's, it's such an awesome community to be in, be involved in, and you'll have a blast and you're going to make like lifetime friends with this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I definitely should. I should go, I should like do my makeup as something really creepy and go like that. <laughs> yeah. They, they have cosplay contests too. I mean, anything. It would yeah. Be, there I think, you go. I think you would have a good, I really do think you'd have a good time. I don't know how you are as far as like, if somebody's in costume dressed up as something crazy, if that would scare you or not. No, the scene that okay. stuff doesn't freak me out at all. Like I'm such, I'm so like picky with it. It's so weird. Cause like I said, I could go to a haunted house. Oh okay, yeah. You did say that. And there's no, like, I mean it, like obviously I get freaked out like from the jumps, you know, being mm -hmm. startled, but like, I guess because I just know they're like actors dressed up like it just yeah. doesn't bother me, you know, but even though I know movies are like fake, there's just something so convincing. I think that it's like a different thing in my brain. The movie that messed me up was absolutely the grudge. I was like 13 and I went and saw it with like all my guy friends. I was so terrified. I like had to sleep in, in the bed with my little brother <laughs> Because I couldn't sleep alone in my room. And, like, I don't know why, but, like, genuinely that movie messed me up for, like, two years. I was just, oh. like, terrified. So, like, literally, like, 15 years old. <laughs> like, being like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, but, you know, I think, okay, let me ask you, what, what would you recommend? Like, if I had to watch, like, three movies, three horror movies, what would you recommend? This is tough. This is I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. That's like my favorite franchise. So I would say watch, start out with those. Okay. Um, honestly, you know what? Cause you said you want to watch Halloween. I'll say start out with like Halloween, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, just because those are like the quote unquote big three. Okay. 
and they're not really that scary. They're to me, they're fun. They're very enjoyable for the most part. As you know, a franchise in any type of genre of movies, it starts like here and then kind of goes down, up and down. But I would definitely say check those out. And there's an app called um, Tubi, T U B I. Have you ever heard of that app? Yeah. It's a free app. Download that app, or you could use it like right on your computer. Tons of movies on there, not just horror, but there's tons of like classic horror movies on there. There's a lot I haven't even seen myself, and I'll just I'll literally just go through there and just hit play, and I have a great I either have a great time or terrible time because the movie sucks, <laughs> but it's so and, like Tubi is worth it. Do you like um? Do you like B-rated horror movies? Oh, like, I, oh my gosh, yes, I love cheesy B-rated horror comedies. Like earlier today, I did a podcast with my friend James. We did a movie called "Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. <laughs> so yes, I'll watch, like I'll okay. really watch anything. Now those I love. Um, I will say my two favorites of those. I love um, "Killer Clowns from Outer Space" is like one of my faves. And um, have you seen Pinocchio's Revenge? Because it's actually really good. (laughs) That's like in my mental list to watch. And I still have not watched that yet. So I will. I need to watch that. You should because it's actually got a really good (laughs) storyline. You can watch that. Yeah. Horror comedies. There's one that I I finally bought it on DVD. It should be here, I think, next week. It's called Thanks Killing. It's about a killer turkey. A (laughs) turkey that just kills people. And it... I don't know what it is about that movie because it's it's so cheesy and so bad that it's good and I love like it's my favorite horror comedy right now. Hands down. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. That definitely sounds just, like one I would love. <laughs> it's it's like the turkey looks like the turkey is a, a hand like a puppet. You can tell it's a puppet, but it's just it's just so funny and fun, and I just love it. I well, talk about the movie so much. That's kind of how I thought Pinocchio's Revenge was going to be. Was just like so god awful, but it is god. It is. It is. But it's also like really good too. I was actually very impressed with that movie. But you'll see when you watch it. <laughs> and that's another thing I can say with horror is once you get into it more, for some strange reason, us horror fans like you could say, "Hey, Aaron, I seen." Let's just say Pinocchio's Revenge. I'll just use that as an example, and it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. As a horror fan, for some reason, I will go watch that horror movie to see how bad it really is. It's like, is she, you know, is Mackenzie exaggerating? Was it that bad? Is it better than what she says it is? Or is it worse than what she says it is? Versus if you come to me and say, I'll use the same movie. Hey, Aaron, watch Pinocchio's Revenge. It's the best horror movie I've ever seen. I'll take longer to watch something like that because there's there's so much room for disappointment, I'll say. As far as, yeah. like, you know, how movie. Social media, they're, they're always hyping up movies all the time. Oh, this is the scariest movie. People are passing out in the theaters. And you go and watch it. And I'm like, what, what is this? I yeah. Don't, and it's not like that I don't like these movies. It's just I go in there. I try to go into movies without expectations at all, zero expectations. That's hard sometimes. And then when people hype it up, on so, especially when they hype it up on social media, I usually try to ignore it. You go and check it out. And I'm like, okay, this, this movie was okay or it wasn't that bad. But it's not as good as they say it was. Now, if they just tell me just to check the movie out straight, I'm like, hey, check this movie out. You'll enjoy it. I'll probably like it more just for the sense I won't have that high expectations for it. And I always, like, with the horror comedies, though, those ones, I just, I already know automatically turn your brain off. Don't take it serious. And just, it's one of those movies you, you, you're watching it for what it is. Like, you're literally watching it for what it is. Like, the Dude Bro, Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. <laughs> And the funny thing about that movie is that it's part three, right? There's no one and two. Like, because we were looking at, we did a podcast last night and we just happened to see that movie and we're like, oh, we should do it, you know, do it tomorrow, whatever. And we're looking at part one and part two and you find out there is no part one and part two. It's just part three. <laughs> part <laughs> that three. makes it's even so better. Ridiculous. That's but, so funny. Uh, so another way I'll tell you, you can get into horror possibly, which would be baby steps, but it would help some because there is some horror elements in them and there's some cool kills in them, is just horror comedies in general. Find a horror comedy, and there's plenty on Tubi, and kind of just take your time with it, and then maybe do like a horror comedy and then something scary. Or no, do something scary and then a horror comedy. So that way you're just, <laughs> okay. The last movie I seen was a horror movie, but it was a comedy, so I got to laugh. Yeah. Build it up like that. That's not a bad idea. I, I, I don't know if I can watch like 
the paranormal stuff until I've like worked on set. I think being on set might help like mm -hmm. for some reason with that. So I don't know, but I, but I think the slashers is like a good place to start because honestly, I just haven't watched them because I've always thought, Oh, I, I'm going to be terrified. But the older I'm getting, I'm like, okay, actually it doesn't freak me out as much. Like one, one movie I always thought was going to just like absolutely terrify me because of the grudge was uh, the ring. Okay. And uh, my friend, she loves horror, so she made me watch it. And, yeah, it wasn't scary at all. Like, I was like, why did I freak <laughs> out all these years, like, thinking this was going to be terrifying, and it actually, like, really was not bad at all. So Yeah. See, that's – there you go with that. I mean, I guess it's a hit or miss with movies, and I, I know what The Ring, and I know what The Grudge, I don't know what the actual names are called, but they have Japanese versions that are way crazier, which I want <laughs> to see myself. But, um, yeah, like, I'll just do that route. Do whatever route you feel is going to help you the best. I just say mix it in with the horror comedies because they're hilarious. And if you're okay. someone who doesn't mind the cheesy horror comedies, you'll be fine. My wife cannot stand them. The Thanksgiving movie I was telling you about, two <laughs> minutes, two minutes of it. And she left. She's like, I can't do this. And left the room. Oh. Like, it's such a good movie. Yeah, I, like, to me, those specifically, like, the worse it is, like, the better. Like, for sure. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, it's just yeah. one of those movies you just want to soak in all of its awful hilarity you know <laughs> now there, there is some bad horror comedies i've watched i can't think of the one something about a chicken i forgot what it was called poultry guys there you go i watched that <laughs> and i didn't like it i did finish it though i watched it one time and i think the part that bothered me there was a lot of singing in it it was like a musical mm -hmm. and it was just too weird even for me. I was like, you know what? This is this is a one time watch. I'm gonna finish it because I want to see how it ends. This is a one time watch, and I will never do it again unless somebody comes on, hits me up, like, hey, I want to review this movie on the podcast with you. That's the only way I'll watch that movie again. But it's I'm trying to find a movie that I like more than Thanks Killing as far as horror comedy, and it still hasn't happened yet. I don't think it's gonna I'll happen. Watch that now because that does sound amazing. Thanks oh. Killing. Thanks Killing. Yes, it's it used to be on YouTube. I think it was on Tubi for a little bit. It might still be. I like I said. I just and the other day I just ordered it on Amazon. I was like, I have to get it. There's a part one and a part three of this movie. That's what I forgot to tell you. There is no part two. Part three. They're searching for part two. Part three wasn't that good. It's a. I only watched that one literally one time. But like with the DVD bundle I got, it was like fourteen bucks for both. But the combo pack I was like, why? You know why not? Right. So I might watch it again. I might not. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, but the original, oh, I'm gonna watch the hell out of that. I already know. I'm gonna oh watch. man. Okay. Well, you've you've got me motivated to watch that one at least. I will watch that one. <laughs> I don't know what it is like. Is but if you listen to my previous ep like some of my previous episodes, I talk. I bring that movie up so much. You would think I'm getting paid to do this, but I'm not. <laughs> I really genuinely enjoy that movie. And I recommend that not sponsored. <laughs> I recommend that more than I recommend like other horror movies just because I think it's because it's so ridiculous and so funny. Like I feel you can get a good laugh out of it. Oh, I am so ready. That is right up my alley. I like it just scary enough to make me jump a bit, but also like just, I have to have some laughs in there. Oh, th this one, I don't think you'll jump. I, I got to watch it again. I don't think you'll jump if you do not much, but you will laugh. You will laugh. Within like the first minute of the movie, you're going to be like, what the hell am I watching? Why, why am I watching this? But you're going to laugh at it at the same time. Like, holy shit. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, my gosh. Um, I will say my favorite like actual horror movie, I've watched it so many times, is probably The Descent, though. I, I don't know why, but I love that movie. That's the one in the caves, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen it a few times. I haven't seen it in a long time, but... I do really appreciate the makeup on that movie, though. Like, the creatures are so crazy. Like, so nasty. Yeah. Oh, there was a movie that me and my wife watched that was similar to that a couple weeks ago. I wish I could remember it, because I would recommend it to you, and I completely forgot what the hell it's called now. Hmm. It's pretty similar to that. Like, they went camping. It was just a couple of friends... They all went camping, and they somehow one of the girls fell into like a gold mine. So like you know, the other people go down there try to save her. They find out there's gold down there. They try to take the gold, and then that's when all the crazy shit starts happening. I don't remember. 
the movie too well. It's something I would definitely watch again. I just wish I remember the, t- the damn title. Interesting. Was it good though? Like were the no? It was. It was a good. It was a pretty good movie though. Like it was. It was good. It was a fun. It was a fun watch. And okay. I want to say it was on Amazon Prime, but I could be wrong. I believe it was on Amazon Prime though. Either yeah, Prime or movie. Look into that because I definitely do love The Descent, so I probably would like something like that. Yeah, I think you would. Hmm. Interesting. And the descent, yeah, that's that's not bad. Like I said, I haven't seen it in a while, so I can't really describe it. But I know it wasn't a bad movie, and I mean, I don't know why, but I've watched that movie like so many times. Like it by far surpasses any <laughs> horror movie I've watched. <laughs> it, it, it's funny with that though. Like for me, I think my movie that I probably watched more than any other movie it's the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, and that's only because as a kid. It would come Friday the 13th that weekend. They're showing it all weekend. It would come on the USA Network, and I would watch it over and over and over. And it just got to the point where I'm just like, this is amazing. And then when I finally got to see it like on VHS, because you know how on regular TV they cut out all the good stuff, I'm just like, wow. I'm just, wow. And then, you know, I remember the weekend. I remember when it came out on DVD. The weekend it came out on DVD, my brother and I took the bus to go pick it up from the mall. I think it was like FYE went to go grab it, brought it back home and we weren't old enough to drink yet. So we went to the store. I went to the store to get like some snacks because it was like right next door and you know, candy chips, whatever the case may be and like some Red Bulls or something. And the funny thing about this is where I lived at the time, it was a Hess gas station or a Speedway gas station and it was like right next door to my backyard and I can like cut through my yard and go there. And cut the, you know, that's how we'd go. We need to go back and forth like that, go, out, go around the front. So I went out there, come back, and on my way back, my brother's hiding behind this big ass tree, <laughs> scared the hell out of me because he just jumped out and grabbed me or something. <laughs> I yelled. I was like, oh shit. And I was talking, I was like, oh, what would you have done if I just decided to go around the front door? You know, went in the front way. You would have been waiting out here like an asshole for bad long, and I'm upstairs looking for you. <laughs> but he got me good, though. But yeah, we watched that Friday the 13th movie, that franchise, throughout that whole weekend. Like that was, uh-huh. it. and now even, well, even in my childhood, like when we would rent VHS movies, we would try to, you know, rent, let's say part one, part two or whatever, and try to finish the whole franchise. And like, even now, so when I watch certain movies, like say the Halloweens, the Nightmare on Elm Streets, the, um, Friday the 13th, if I start from part one, I'll watch them, maybe not in the same weekend, but I'll watch them all throughout, like over a few, you know, those next couple of weeks or whatever the case may be, whenever I have time to. And I never get sick of it, especially the Friday the 13th franchise. Like, I never get sick of it. I never get sick of hearing the story. I'm just like, this is just so fun. I enjoy it. And, I mean, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen them, so I definitely feel like I, that's where I should start. Because I don't think that they would freak me out too much. And they're so classic. Like, everybody knows those movies. And, you know, so I think that's where I'm going to start on my horror adventure. <laughs> now there's another app called, um, shutter. Okay. I, I don't know if they still have the trial going. I know for, especially when this whole COVID-19 started, they had a trial. I don't remember what the code was. I don't even think I knew what the code was, but it was, they give you a month for free. As long as you use that promo code. I know it's, they used to have the one where it's just regular, you know, regular week. It might still be like that too. I got it, but the app is only, it's not, yeah, it's only five bucks a month. And, they have all kinds of horror movies on there, like just Shutter exclusives on there. And then they have, they, as a matter, speaking of Friday the 13th, they just put one through eight on there, maybe like a week or two ago. So, I mean, if you wow. wanted to check that out, that's another good way to get into some horror movies. Yeah, that's great. I would definitely say if you didn't want to spend anything, Tubi is like your best. Tubi is definitely your best bet because it's a free app. There's so much stuff on there. So much, so many gems. There's like, I, I watched a movie about a month ago now called Intruder and it's a slasher. It's, 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 yeah, it's considered slasher. It all takes place in a grocery store, but it's so good. Oh, that sounds awesome. They're yeah. So I guess, the, I guess it's the slasher stuff. Doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Start, yeah. Go, go ahead and start out with that. And then, I mean, as far as the paranormal stuff, I can't really say how you should do that. <laughs> if you feel like maybe you want to work on a set first, and kind of, you know, walk your way back into that. Or maybe you just want to say, hey, I'm going to watch a paranormal movie. And then right after this paranormal movie, I'm going to, you know, watch something funny. Yeah. I, you know what? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like dive deep into this. I'm going to start with the slashers and work my way up to some of the paranormal stuff. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Get it rip the band-aid off. <laughs> make, here, to make it even more fun, watch a certain movie. If I haven't reviewed it on the podcast, come and review it on the podcast with me. Yeah, I would love to. And that way, you know, rip the band-aid right off. And you'll have a laugh at it after, you know, with this. Then we'll see what happens. That's not a bad idea, actually. I'm just like maybe talking about it while I'll be like, okay, I'm not so scared anymore. <laughs> yeah, it won't be. I, I it, it can only help. I don't. I don't think it can make it worse, but I'm no expert, so I I have no idea. It, can, it should only help. I feel. I am excited though, because I do feel like I am missing out on like a whole lot of stuff, and I mean, I can already tell, like, just by the people that I've met out here, that the horror community is a good community like you were saying and you know just for me being a makeup artist out here like it's just good for me to have some knowledge in the horror Mm -hmm. like genre so i'm gonna do it i feel really inspired talking to you and then my friend jonathan um as well he's you know obviously big into horror too so like I, it's just it's meant for my life to just like dive into it (laughs) oh definitely definitely i mean (laughs) Once once you really get into it, and I guess I kind of you know what it is. I'm I'm kind of envious of you in a sense of the fear that you have. I kind of wish I had it as maybe not like a a real fear fear, but as far as like just the fear, like I miss like the tight knots in my stomach or like the butterflies and like just jumping at a lot of things and just be like holy. I wish I had it at least during the movie, not necessarily covering my eyes, but just a little fear during the movie. And then once the movie's over, you know that fear is just like I'm not gonna. I don't want to sleep with the light on because I, I, I don't want my wife to judge me if I have to have the bright eye. Like, listen, <laughs> I'm scared. I got to have the light. <laughs> That's, I, I don't want to be that scared, but I'd like to be at least a little afraid of, during the movie just, cause, just to get that adrenaline rush. So you don't get scared at all during these movies? No, not real. I mean, like, I, here and there I'll have, like, a jump scare, but it's not like – I'm not like, oh, shit, like, jumping and screaming. I'll just, like, jump like, oh. And that's it. Yeah. And it's gone. But like my wife will have like this genuine fear where she'll mo- mainly with paranormal. Like she's the same. She'll cover her eyes during a, a lot of movies. When we used to go to the movies a lot, she would take one of them. Like I'd be wearing a hat and she would take my hat and just put it over her eyes. <laughs> and it, I would laugh every so like if it would be me and her going or just be her and my brother. La- we'd be laughing the whole time, all the time. <laughs> I can't help it. I find it funny. Like that's, that's one thing I do for, I do enjoy about going to watch horror movies and, you know, like the theaters or with a couple of friends and family, the ones that you know are scared because I love watching their reactions and that just makes it even funnier and more entertaining for me. We went to go see, I believe it was like, I want to say the conjuring. I could be wrong, but it was me, my wife and my brother. And there was somebody in there. This lady was scared. And all you heard, she was screaming. She was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't take it. It's so scary. It's so scary. <laughs> that wasn't even the funny part, though. The funny part was like, well, sweet. She was like, the guy was like, well, if you can't take it, then shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. I lost my mind. I was rolling. And it didn't bother me because it was just like those two things. Like, usually if people are talking in a movie, being loud in a movie, it'll piss me off. But it was just literally her being scared and then someone responding to it. And then that was it. But it was hilarious. So... I'm trying to think of another funny time. It was me. This is when we were kids. It was me, my cousin, Michael, and his mother. And we went to go see, I don't know what we went to go see, but I remember his mother was sitting in the, we were sitting like in the, all the way up top and his mother was sitting in the row, like right below us. And she was sitting in the row next to a bunch of people. The whole row jumped in front of us. Me and him were dying. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what it is about seeing people get scared watching, like, you know, watching these type of movies and stuff. But for me, it's the funniest thing in the world. And I mean, I, I wish I could look back at myself when I was a kid. Like, I wish I could just see, you know, like, have like an out of body experience and go back to the past and see myself as a kid watching these movies when I was actually scared of them. Cause it was just, I'd probably just laugh at myself. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I love to scare people. So it's like, I wish I could be like you and go to the theater and like watch the people get scared. But I'm one of those people, unfortunately, like your wife, who's like, putting something over my eyes. (laughs) Like, I think when I went to watch The Conjuring, because I was dating a guy at the time that forced me to go with him and his best friend, I did not want to go, because I knew I was gonna be scared. 
and I, I, I literally had my eyes like this the entire time and I would like peek open. <laughs> and I think one of the first times I peeked open was when that witch like is on the wardrobe or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like just the most terrifying image. And <laughs> of course that's the one time right. I like actually looked, but I was like, yeah that movie that movie was too much for me i didn't watch like i think i ended up watching a total of like 10 minutes of that movie <laughs> oh, wow and honestly like it is a really good movie maybe it's something you should work your way up to it one day but it's a really really good movie i enjoyed the first one the second one and then like the annabelle series or the annabelle uh -huh. movies are connected to it the nun that's connected to it i enjoyed them all and people people don't like the nun as much I thought it was it was pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of CGI with it. That's the bad. That was the bad thing with it. But I enjoyed the movie overall. The thing with those, though, is like uh, those are like based off of true stories. So that's kind of like horrifying to think about, right? <laughs> For me, no. Be I think mainly because I have, like I said earlier, I haven't experienced stuff like that. So for me, it's like again, do I believe? Don't I believe? It's like a yes no thing. But I don't want to experience. I don't want to experience it to where I have to like a hundred percent believe. I'm not gonna say I don't believe, but it's like I'm not gonna test it. You know, if somebody brings right. a Ouija board, I'm like, yo, get out of my house. Don't ever come here again with that. <laughs> You're not yeah. with that. Keep do that at your own house. If you do that at your house, let me know because I'm not coming over anymore. And <laughs> come over, we just we'll ju we'll just zoom from now on because I don't want that thing coming. To my house. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely not good to mess with that stuff. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of scary, though, because even like, just to think that those people like moved into that house and had all this shit happening, like, mm -hmm. that's just absolutely scary. <laughs> you know what I find crazy? I've never had the experience, though. Yeah. Do you know what I find crazy about that stuff, though, is like... With the conjuring, how what is it, the Warrens, I believe. They'll go to all this stuff and they'll collect these um cursed items, because I can't think of the, I can't think of anything else to call them. And then bring them to their own home and have them like in a room locked up. I'm like that. I don't know why. Yeah, like isn't that what they, they had Annabelle or something? Isn't that yeah. where she was? Like they they had <laughs> Annabelle and a bunch of other ones. Okay, like, I haven't watched Annabelle just because I know I will absolutely, like, not be able to sleep for probably years, but, <laughs> um, but I know that's, like, what, that's also based on a true story, right? So, yeah, it's based, like, all, I believe that whole franchise, to an extent, is based on true events. Obviously, they have to hype it up for the movie. Right. But, um, the original Annabelle doll is actually... a. I want to say it's a Raggedy Ann doll, so it's not that doll that they use in the movie. It's really a Raggedy Ann doll, but I feel like the doll they use in the movie is just, it just looks creepier, it looks scarier, and it's going to sell more tickets than a freaking Raggedy Ann doll. So horrifying. That's just so horrifying. Uh, like, okay, so I, one story I have, this was that house that I grew up in when I was, that was haunted. Mm -hmm. I had this little, uh, like, chick, like, chick toy um, that like you would hit the bottom of its feet and it would like make peeping noises. Mm -hmm. And I remember one night, um, it was making that chirping noise and it wouldn't stop. And I went to go take the batteries out of it and there were no batteries. <laughs> oh, I would throw that right in the garbage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> you, know what, you know, what's funny is my older brother and my older cousin were telling me a story. I'm telling my wife a story. I'm sure I heard it when I was a kid or younger about some doll i don't know what kind of doll it was i forgot that my aunt got my cousin and i guess the doll would just do stuff and say things it wasn't supposed to say do things it wasn't supposed to do and they threw it away so many times and it kept it kept coming well the thing is my aunt kept taking it out the garbage to give it to like why you guys throw this away they were telling like how it's like haunted and creepy and all this stuff i think they burned they did a bunch of stuff to it i don't remember what exactly i gotta get that story from them again Maybe I got to get my cousin to tell it, my brother to tell it, and record it so I can put it up as part of an episode. Yeah. But just a, like a lot of crazy stuff. And again, I didn't get to experience it, which I don't know if I should be jealous of that or not. So I'm not saying that they're making it up, but it's just like, I don't have the sense to have a fear for that. But like I said, again, it might sound contradicting. I don't want to figure out that I have a fear for that either. Like, <laughs> no, you're in like the best place to be because you haven't, 
been forced to like deal with it. You know, you don't want to just deal with it if you don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, so you're in a good place. Like I'm, I'm jealous. I feel like we should swap. Like I want some less fear. You can have some of my fear <laughs> totally balance it out. Yeah. Just like I said, as far as it goes for the fear part, I just want like the movie as far as like a movie that's going to have me just like maybe gripping my seat, scared yeah. a little bit. But once the movie's over, you know, I'm done. I'm good. I can go whatever. Like that movie scared me. Cool. What, what movie have, has there been a movie that you've seen that you're like, wow, actually that one did really freak me out. Actually. Since adulthood, I can honestly say no. I can say some, like I said, I've jumped. In a few, I've jumped for a few movies. I I can admit that I'm I jump even more now here. Well, here and there, I'll say, but <laughs> I'll, I'll jump for a few. Movies and it's I, my jumps are more extreme, not crazy, but more frequent. If I'm watching a movie with my wife, and she's like leaning on me or laying on me or has her feet up, and she starts jumping because it makes me jump. <laughs> yeah, there's been times where like, say if I'm I'm watching the movie but I'm like halfway dozing off, and she jumps and I'll jump. <laughs> and that that'll be a thing or again if i'm just like perfectly still it's perfectly quiet and the jump scare happens and she's jumping and i just jump with it jump with her but it's not like it's not like a fear for me yeah like, that's kind of nice well that's kind of how haunted houses are for me it's like i like it because you do get that adrenaline mm -hmm. like you i like the this i like being scared in the moment and then just like when I leave, I'm like, okay, good. I'm, I'm fine. Yes. That's it's what I've... not like I'm terrified the entire time. Yeah. It's just like, I'll have a few jumps here and there, but, um, that's just crazy to me to think that like no movie like really freaks you out. That's wild. It's, it's, I guess, I, I guess it's good and bad because the good is I'll watch anything. But the bad is like I said, I don't have like that. I don't get that adrenaline rush. Like I don't get that heart rush. Like, I only get that now if I'm watching sports, if like if it's my favorite fighter or favorite team playing and you get not the fear thing, but your heart's racing. I don't know why. Cause I have like, if this person loses, if this team loses, it's not going to affect me at all. It's going <laughs> to, I'm going to be mad at the, you know, frustrated for the moment, but like my heart, like I want that at the, at the very least, like my heart pounding when I'm watching a horror movie. If that, if I can have that, that would be great. Not through the whole movie though. Cause that might not be healthy, but just <laughs> through certain parts of it, I think it would be fun. Wow, so well, you need to come and like really make a very scary movie or something. <laughs> I guess so, but I think I think what it is too is because I mean everybody knows that it's just a movie. And I think in my mind, it's just like it's just a movie, so there's nothing to be like afraid of or jump you know, jump is one thing, but like really being afraid of and like getting your adrenaline going, your heart racing. But again, maybe if I dealt with that kind of stuff, which I'm glad I didn't, <laughs> then maybe I'd have a different thing on it you know like a different outlook on it i don't i really don't know though yeah yeah it's i yeah like i said i don't know i've just been around so much paranormal stuff that it's like maybe that's why like even my friend my best friend her house is so freaking haunted like they have a door that um goes into like a storage room in mm -hmm. their basement and she kept telling me that they would open it and it would, or no, they'd close it and then it would open on its own. And so I was over there one day and I'm like, okay, let's just test this out, you know? So we opened it or we, no, sorry, we closed it, go upstairs, hang out for a bit, come back down. It's definitely open. Like, mm. like, no, yeah, like nothing could have gotten it. Like it wasn't an easy door to just like open either. Yeah. Um, she was telling me, see, and this is why, like, movies with like possession like seriously freak me out but because like she said that they were like hanging out at her house there was this lamp that um was like flick like flickering mm -hmm. and someone was just like messing with it with like whatever it was that was down there was like oh like if you're if you're a spirit like blink this many times and it did um and it's like, if you're a harmful spirit, like blink this many times and it blinked like that many times. And my friend was like, no, 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 no. Like, we're not messing with this. Like, stop. Like, we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. And she like went over to like, like unplug the lamp. And I guess it was like already unplugged. <laughs> oh, see. That's that weird, crazy nonsense. That yeah. Like that stuff is like actually scary. Like, 
and like just to experience that like in real life is is kind of terrifying i wasn't there for that specific one but just like anything paranormal that you experience i feel like is pretty crazy so hopefully you don't have to but yeah you never know you might one day well if it happens wait till i'm really old and senile and it won't even really matter I wouldn't even know I what the hell's going on. I give you a different perspective on horror movies after that, though, if, if something like that was to happen. True, but then I got to think about, like, damn, now I got to move, and that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, because my wife is the type, like, she would really, really freak out about that. Like, just go nuts and talk about, like, let's pack up and move now. Like, I'm leaving now. Like, you know, we have to save my, it's, It doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, but, and... and- yeah, it's kind of crazy if you do get stuck in a house like that. I think I think it's even crazier though because I've watched movies where like the people move and it's like attached to the spirit or whatever is attached to them. So if that happens, and I'm sure it happens in real life too, I'm guessing that's even crazy. That would just piss me off. Like, what do you well, do if it's one of your family members, like say your husband or your child? Do you just like, you know what? This has been fun. But it's attached to you. <laughs> I said to this part, but I didn't say anything See about ghosts. I didn't say anything about ghosts. So yeah, this is bye. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Keep we going. really do think that something like followed, like our family around, like connected in itself um, over the years. Because after we moved away from the house, like we've all had experiences. It's so crazy. Do you still have them now? You know what? <laughs> this apartment that I'm living in um, is the first place I don't think I have anything living with me. That's but good. this is the first. I've lived a lot of places, and uh, every single place I have lived at has been haunted. That's true. Yeah, like extremely haunted. Like not even just like a thing here or there. Like really dramatically haunted. Like my sister's house. Like we she had some crazy stuff happen. Like I remember I was like, I shouldn't have been doing this, but I was kind of like messing with it one day because uh, I think her boyfriend had said he saw a woman standing in the laundry room. And I was like, all right, fine. Like you've been messing with us this whole time. Cause there was like a lot of activity going on at this time. And I was like, you've been messing with us this whole time. Like show yourself. Like I shouldn't have been doing that, but I was definitely like egging it on. And I swear to you, something flew off of the shelf, like the top of the, my sister's like bookcase thing. And I was like, okay, well, and never mind. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. <laughs> like, oh, <it> <laughs> yeah, no, like, then that's just like mild, you know, we've, we've like recorded stuff and like heard male voices like over our recording and mm-hmm. it's pretty wild, but um, so I'm <laughs> just like, I don't know. It's just always been on like the front of my mind because everywhere I've lived, we've always had crazy stuff going on. No, I, that's understandable. I mean, if you're living and dealing with that kind of stuff, then you're just gonna be like, oh shit. Yeah. And then <laughs> watching movies, uh, scary movies on top of that. Actually, this might be the place where I should start watching that stuff. Cause like I said, nothing happens here. Like this is the first place I've lived where it's, totally calm and i don't have anything going on so maybe i actually can watch horror movies and not be terrified (laughs) yeah like i said start out with a slasher and comedy horror and then work your way up to the one that really gives you that fear but slashers and comedy horror are like they're easy to do thanks killing is definitely on my top (laughs) on list I can here here's what i need you to do for me if if i don't know how you're gonna find it now I'll, i'll try to help you find it (laughs) <laughs> I don't remember what, what platform it's on, but I need to know, like, as soon as you're done watching that movie or any time during that movie, definitely just shoot me an email and let me know how you feel about that movie. Cause I recommend that movie so many times. And again, like I said, I don't know why I like it so much. I just, it's, I just love it. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to watch it. I know I'm going to love it. <laughs> it <sighs> I hope so. It's, I'm telling you, it's, it's so funny and so weird and strange. Well, I'm actually interested to see what you think of Pinocchio's Revenge whenever you get a chance to watch that. So let me know what you think of that one, because I, I actually that. really liked that movie. 
and granted, I don't watch a lot of horror movies, so you might be like, this is garbage, but like, <laughs> I don't know, I really did, I, I enjoyed it. Oh, it was do. what I was expecting, I'll say that. Thanks Killing is on Tubi. Thanks Killing and Thanks Killing 3 are both on Tubi. Oh my gosh, okay. I will, I will get Tubi and uh, get on that. I'm going to email you the link right now, just because... Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> this, again, I can't, like seriously, I'm so excited. I don't know what it is about these two movies. Well, the first one. The, the third one, I'll say watch just to watch it. I'm not recommending the third one, but the first one, highly recommended. Okay. And you said part two is just what, lost? <laughs> yeah, that's, they, like, they explain that in part three, that part two is lost. And Interesting. It, it, it's, once you put it this way, watch, watch the first one, and then after you watch that one, watch the third one, and you'll see why it's just so weird and different and why I... It doesn't get a lot of fanfare, as far as my opinion. Like, I don't even talk about that movie too much. It's just when I bring up Things Killing, like, there's a part three. But actually, I actually a friend, a good friend of mine, because we were talking about that movie, and at a convention, which is crazy. <laughs> at a convention, <laughs> we were in line. This wasn't a horror con, though, but there were some horror icons that were there. And so my, my one friend, Anthony, he has a podcast called Video Game Crosstalk, and he was there. He was there for, you know, he's doing like a weekend thing. He had a table there for the weekend. He asked me and actually another friend that I made through Anthony at this con. His name is Chris. He has a podcast called um, Stories from a Bar. But he asked us if we can help him throughout the weekend. And he gave us, you know, the pass that he had. He had, well, he, got, he gave me a vendor pass for the whole, I was like, yeah, I can help you all three days. No problem. So, you know, I can go there early with the vendor pass or media pass, whatever it was. I can go get there early walk around, figure out where his table is, drop my stuff off. My wife was with me, so they let her come up with me and all that. And then we went going back to get in line to get the tickets. Because we also had weekend passes for the tickets for her. And I met this dude there, and his name is Matt. And we were just talking about random horror stuff, just in general, like as a group. This is, this is how horror fans like unite together. And I brought up Thanks Killing. I was like, have you ever seen this movie called Thanks Killing? Because we were talking about B-rated cheesy horror movies. He's like, yeah. And both of us was like, that's such a fun movie. Ended up making friends out of that. This was like two or three years ago now. And the funny thing is, is I've seen him before so many times at this con called Scaricon. And he would carry, you know, the baby carriers that people have where they carry the kid like in the front on their chest. Well, he had a gremlin in there. Yeah. And I've taken pictures with him. Uh, never met, like, never talked. Just like, you know, hey, can I take a picture with you? Or can I take a picture of that? Like, never had a conversation or never exchanged nothing up until this con a couple of years ago. And we've been friends ever since. And he's been on this podcast plenty of freaking times. And it's just, it's just funny how that it, and it's all because of Thanks Killing. <laughs> just, I just love that so much. Movie. So that, I oh, think. Yeah. As crazy as it sounds, I think that makes me like that movie maybe a little bit more only because it's like I made a cool friend off of that movie. And I just enjoy the movie. I love the stupid humor. And uh, you'll, you'll just see. Just, I'm going to love it. Seriously. Like, cannot wait. like, but I, but like I said, I would be interested to hear your take on Pinocchio's <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> For real. Oh, I'll definitely. I'm, I'm going to watch that movie. I got to find it, but I'll watch it. Yeah, it used to be on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there. It's probably not. That was kind of a few years ago that I discovered it, but it might be. I know I know I've seen it somewhere as far as like It's so good. Like, I don't know. It was just like I said it was better than I was expecting, but like it, I haven't seen that many B horror movies like that one and I would say uh Killer Clowns is probably like Killer the Clowns is it. fun. Killer Clowns. Killer Clowns is one of my favorites. I wa I've watched that so many times. It's just so good. <laughs> so <I> just, bad. <laughs> I just did, excuse me. I just did a podcast on that last. I just released it this week actually. But I did a podcast on it a few weeks ago with my friend, my friend Chris, and we had a good time with it. The funny thing with that one was he was over there doing it via Zoom. He's drinking beer. I'm taking shots of Hundred Proof Southern Comfort. I paid for it that night, so I took like eight shots. I paid for it, but it was still a fun and funny podcast. <laughs> I'm sure it was. And those are like that's that's another fun thing about horror comedies is that's like you can make a drinking game out of any movie. I feel, but the horror comedies like something silly that happens, take a shot if you if you drink, of course. 
And that's, I feel like it's another good way with friends or even on the podcast, we're talking about when we take a shot for whatever reason, maybe even for a scarier movie too, like a slasher. Every time somebody gets killed or just something happens, you know, take a shot. It's, you got to find a way to make it fun, I guess. More fun, more entertaining. You're right. I'll be like so shit faced by the end of the movie. I won't even give a shit. <laughs> like, or you'll fall asleep. <laughs> something. Like with me, with the whole the Southern Comfort thing, I thought it would be a good idea to take all these shots because instead of instead of like pouring say like two, three, maybe four shots and just bringing it up, bringing it up to where I record it, which is my attic, I brought the whole bottle up with a shot glass <laughs> and was just pouring and just as we're going through. And you know how when you're talking with a friend or whatever, if you have a drink or shots, you're having a conversation about whatever you're having a conversation and you're just kind of just taking shots or having a drink, not really thinking about the effects of it until you stand up and it really hits you. And that's pretty much, I remember going, here's what I remember from that night. I remember after, you know, we're done recording, which did that successfully, saved everything, shut everything down. From there, I went downstairs. I texted my wife to have her throw, you know, throw me in like a journal pizza. She did that for me. So I had that go downstairs. I take, I think I ate maybe a slice and that's when everything just starts coming. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> bad. And it was so bad. Like I was, I, I didn't have a hangover the next day as far as a headache, but I was just exhausted. I had like no appetite. I was eating like real light, just drinking water and eating maybe like soup <laughs> or something oh, like that. I it kind of sounds like you got off easy though, because oh my God, any like, I get the worst hangovers. It, like, I literally feel like I'm like dying. My head's like pounding. I'm like mm -hmm. throwing up. It's awful. It is. I learned though. I, I mean, I know better because. You know, I know better, but it was just, I was, it was in the moment. So now, like <laughs> earlier, I was recording my boy James and for the Dude Bro Party Massacre movie, I was like, I brought up two shots of that same 100 proof stuff, which is funny though. You know, some people, when they get sick from an alcohol, like really like, like that, they don't want to drink it again or they don't want to drink it for a while. I think I started drinking it like maybe two or three days later. <laughs> I gave myself a couple of days to recuperate and I have like a bottle and half downstairs now of it. But yeah, earlier, I brought up two shot glasses of it. I had like these little mason jars, they're like this big, and they have a little top on. I was like, you know what? Let me pour two shot, a shot in each of these, and bring that up. And if I want to take them, I'll take them. But I don't need to bring up the whole bottle because I, I know what's gonna happen if I bring up the whole bottle. I'm not doing it anymore. I'll bring up a few shots and enjoy talking about some horror. Oh man, yeah, that's the fun stuff. Like getting older, like knowing you can't drink as much anymore. <laughs> It's the crazy thing though, is like even in my twenties, I know there's no way in hell I need to be doing eight shots back to back of hundred proof anything. And what made it worse was like I didn't eat for like hours. Like if I had eaten dinner beforehand, I might not have gotten sick. I was wasted. Like I again, <laughs> I remember going downstairs eating you know vomiting and then i have no idea how i got upstairs to my room and got into my bed but my wife said i made it upstairs she was like surprising you made it upstairs and you wanted to take a shower but i was like you need to just you're like i was so wait she's like you need to just go to bed and that's what i did i went to bed but i don't remember getting in my room i don't any of that i was i guess you could say i was blacked out i'm glad i didn't do anything crazy or stupid but i'm not that type of person anyway even being drunk but I'm glad I didn't do anything crazy or stupid or like just try to go somewhere, which again, I'm not that really a type of person, but it was just like, how the hell did I'm like, how I was just asked, like, how did I get upstairs? <laughs> I don't oh care. I but you know, carry me. just chilling, hanging out, talking, like it's easy yeah. to just like you said, just it's it's real easy. Especially again with for me, I'm talking with like the other dude. We always joke around that our one fan Anthony is more mature than us and he's responsible for us. So I blame him for why I got so drunk in that video. Even though he was he had nothing to do with it. He wasn't there. He wasn't recording with us. He was just home with his family, minding his own business. And but it was his fault. It was, yeah, definitely his fault. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm gonna watch Pinocchio's Revenge. I think I see a thing on YouTube right now. I'm gonna I'm go. definitely gonna watch Pinocchio's Revenge. I'll find it one way. If it's not on YouTube, I'll find it one way or another, Fire Stick or something, and I'll let you know how I feel about it. And hey, maybe we can review that movie. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I would say thanks, Killing, but I did I did that twice already. <laughs> I did it once. I did it once with my friend Matt. We did part one and part three, 
And then I did it again with my guys, uh, Greg and John. But we did it as we were drinking and smoking. And we did it as the movie was playing. We're like talking about the movie as it's going on. That was fun and funny, but very difficult to like, not to carry the conversation, but you know, you, you're about to say something you forget. <laughs> I was like, yeah. That happened a lot, but it was, it was a funny, fun time. If I ever do Thanks Killing again, it's going to have to be because of my green screen. Like, there's a plenty of movies I want to do again just because I have the green screen now. And I, that's just my excuse. Like, I can have the trailer playing with, like, the movie art. So, maybe. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, maybe that's super. I'll well, it. I'll definitely let you know what I think of it for I sure. Hope you enjoy it. I'm so excited to watch it. Like, I didn't know it was a thing, but I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know I'm going to love it. I hope so. I like. I I feel like I just made it a thing. I know it's not just me, but I I don't know too many people that I've seen the movie that really really enjoy it as much as I do. And like I said, the Blu-ray or the, I'm sorry, the Blu-ray, the DVDs will be here next week, and I cannot wait. And I know I'm gonna do like a. I do my YouTube videos. Or I'll do like a unboxing or unpackaging. So I'm gonna be doing it for those. And I just wish that they had made a Thanksgiving shirt. I would be all <laughs> set because I would have a shirt on. Oh my gosh! Well, they should. Um, I think that's why I'm so excited for you to see uh, Pinocchio's Revenge, though, because, like, literally, I think you might be the only person that even knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I will, I will watch like, it. I just need somebody to, to tell me what they think about it, because, like, nobody has watched it. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh, man, you got to meet my horror, cir horror circle, because we watch some good and bad horror. We'll watch anything, and then it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you don't enjoy it, I'll just never watch it again. If I don't enjoy a movie, I won't watch it again unless somebody wants to do it on a podcast, which happens at times. And I'm down to do that, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion about it. I even, ch you know, what's funny is I changed my rating. My rating used to be from a one to a 10. Now it's negative 10 to positive 10 because of a movie. My friend and I watched I think it was last week or the week before last called Blood Lake. It's on Tubi from 1987. One of the worst movies I've ever seen in my out of any genre. One of the worst movies that I've ever seen in my life. It was just horrible, but we had to watch it. <laughs> oh man. But it's still like interesting to see like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's I, worth watching the movie once at least just yeah, you, to see. You have to, and like, there's there's been so many movies, especially with like, oh my god, like shark movies. Don't get me into those because I don't know what it is about aquatic horror. I love it, and I'll watch it. And I've watched some really good ones, and I've watched some ones where I'm just like, what the hell am I watching? But I'll finish the movie. That's that's the funny thing. Like, I'll I'll finish. I'll watch the whole movie, hoping that it gets better. <laughs> and with those movies that I'm talking about, like with the shark movies that I've watched, like there's one called Jurassic Shark and Piranha Shark. Yeah. Wait, who, do you know who makes those? I'm not sure. I work for, I, like, I've done some movies for Asylum, and they did Sharknado. Oh. But I don't know if they're the same ones who made those. But, yeah, they're, <laughs> it's one of those that you want, yeah. you know, you kind of got to. I finished. <laughs> Shark, and you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm, it's funny you brought up Sharknado because, like, those were ones I was like, these movies are, I only watched, like, the first one and a half. I was like, these movies are so bad. They're like the worst shark movies I've ever seen until I've seen these other two shark movies. <laughs> Jurassic Shark and uh, Piranha Shark. I was like, I was like, even Sharknado is better than these. And I only watched <laughs> the first one and a half of those. Because I originally, when Sharknado came out, like when it was all on Netflix, I was like, I want to watch it because I love shark movies. Like, I want to watch these. And I tried and I tried. And it was just, it was rough to get through. But I do know one of them goes to space. So I do want to see that one just because it goes to space. Oh, I see my how ridiculous God. that is, but I don't know. Sharknado just didn't grasp because I'll watch a cheesy shark movie and enjoy it, but that one just didn't really do it for me. And I was hoping it would. I was hoping Piranha Shark would because that just sounded cool, but it wasn't. Which one is your favorite? Like, what's what? one you would recommend? Um, besides Jaws, because Jaws is like a Jaws is definitely a good one. That's a given. I'll say, watch this movie called Piranha. Piranha. It's a real, I think it's, there's, there's Piranha from the, is it either the seventies or the eighties? And there's another one called Piranha three double D. That's a, it's pretty much a remake. That one was also fun. The first one was better, but I liked both of those, the Piranha movies. 
And there's just honestly, I'll say any shark movie. <laughs> I'll be honest, any shark movie, I'll say give it a try. Any aquatic horror movie, give it a shot, and you're either gonna love it or hate it. There's no because it, for those movies, there's no. I feel there's no in between in my opinion. Like I love Jaws. I love the Piranha movies. I did not like Sharknado. I did not like Piranha Shark and those other ones. But it's it's so great. It's so great, and it's it's just one of those things where it's just like it's almost like a train wreck. Like you're just like this might get better. This train might not derail, and then you get to the end of the movie, and you're like, damn, I wasted <laughs> an hour and a half on this movie. <laughs> And, and it's even worse. Like I've watched movies back to back. Like I, th- I think I watched Piranha Shark and Jurassic Shark back to back, and that was just, oh my god. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and it wasn't, but it was just like the movies by title alone. They have so much potential, and I'll go by that. Like Blood Lake, the other movie I was telling you about that was horrible. I only watched that to check it out because of the title of the movie. The title, I'm like Blood Lake. This has to be cool, and it wasn't. But no, it's not gonna. It's not gonna stop me from, um, you know, checking out other movies with cool titles. And I'm doing like at the end of this year, I'm doing my bottom ten horror movies I've seen this year for the first time, no matter when they came out. But for the first time I've seen this year, I'm doing my top ten I've seen this year. Blood Lake is already on there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what other movies on there? I don't know if I'm gonna do if if I do sequels. Summer Party Massacre 2 is on there. If I don't do sequels, then it won't be on there. I'm still debating that one. Because sequels, I think it's unfair to put sequels on there to an extent, only because a lot of times sequels are usually worse than the original movie. Agreed. Anyway, so yeah, I, I totally agree that. But we'll see. But yeah, so I can't wait. I can't wait to see what's going to be on my list at the end of the year. My list, Intruder is on my top 10 list of horror movies for this year. It can get bumped off because it's still early in the year, but that was one I just, again, it's in a grocery store. And if you ever worked retail, you see some, you'll get some idea like, holy shit, this is crazy. Like I've been around these machines or I've been around this type of thing. I used to work at Target. So I've been in retail in the back and just the kills are, I'm telling you, there are amazing kills in the movie, practical effects because it's from the eighties. So there's no CGI crap, practical effects. I think you'll like it. I really do. I actually am really excited for that one. Um, I, yeah, you've given me uh, so many good recommendations. I have good places to start. And that is also on Tubi. And with again, Tubi's free. They have like two minute ads here and there when you're watching the movie, which isn't a big deal. And I guess that's how they pay. You know, that's how they pay for the stuff. So it's not a big deal at all. And if you sign in, if you sign up to Tubi with your email, then you can save movies in your queue, which is great. And when you know you can sign it on different, like I have it on my laptop, I have it on my PlayStation, I have it on both the Fire Sticks in the house. I'm actually getting a new Fire Stick. It should be here either Friday or Saturday. I'll be putting it on that, and just so I can just watch the movies. Because usually when I do a movie review too, I'll watch the movie obviously first, and then I'll have it playing in the background on mute, like while I'm recording with somebody. My other TV's like literally right here, so I can kind of just glance over at it and hey, this is the part that's up now. Blah blah blah. So yeah. I highly recommend Tubi. <laughs> highly. Yeah, recommend Tubi. I'm. I'm definitely going to download that tonight, and I'm going to watch. Yeah, your Thanks Killing, and what is this one called again? The Intruder. Intruder. Okay. Yeah, both of those sound really good, and then I'm going to get on the the classics too. Yeah, it's a oh, good place to start, I think. Oh yeah, I mean, like I said, Tubi has a lot of classics, and it has a lot of unknown classics that just. I mean, I haven't seen them, but they're still like classics and cult classics for others that have, you know, seen all these movies. But I really do think you're going to enjoy it. And I think it's awesome that you're really, you really do want to get into horror. I think that's an amazing thing. And I'm just going to say welcome to the horror family because this is awesome. I can't wait to see what you think about these movies, for one. Especially Thanks Killing. Like, I can recommend you a million movies, but Thanks Killing is like the one I have to know first. Even though I'm recommending you, like, Intruder is a way better movie, but you'll have more fun with Thanksgiving with the laughs, of course. <laughs> just, just, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just so excited to see it, but, but also I'm excited to see Intruder too. So I'm really glad you gave those recommendations. I'll let you know what I think though. I can't wait. I can't I either. I can wait. That's going to be awesome. I know. I, know. I, I might watch that tonight actually. <laughs> I think you should. And I think you really, really enjoy it. And you're just going to be like, 
you're either going to really enjoy it or really hate it. Either way, you might be questioning, what the hell is he watching? <laughs> but I already going to love it. I'm expecting yeah. to suck. Because I've got that from people like, hey, what the hell is this? I'm like, hey, look, it's funny, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is funny. Okay. It's a horrible Yeah, movie. I have a good sense of humor, so I'm sure I'm going to think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. I cannot wait. Awesome. And again, I got to thank you for coming on, though. This was a great time. And like I said, I definitely need to have you come on again to see what you do. I have to have you come on. I'll say this. In a few months, like once things get back to normal, have you come on, like once you get into the work and you're doing on set to see how that is. I want to have you come on way before that, though. But I'm just saying like for that. And then I want to have you come on and do some movie review. Anytime you want to do a horror movie review, just shoot me an email. And I'm always down to do a, a movie review, especially since I'm at home all the damn time. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can, uh, maybe we should, maybe you and I should review Pinocchio's Revenge together. Oh, definitely. I'm down. Yeah, and then we can just chat about it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, thank you so much for having me. I've had a lot of fun, like, talking and, you know, giving you all my childhood ghost drama. And <laughs> oh, it's cool, though. It's cool. It was a great time. It was fun. And yeah. we, I mean, we could wrap it up, but I will say just, when we do wrap it up, just please stay put when I stop recording. Um, sure. But if there's anything you want to plug, please feel free. Plug, plug, plug away with your makeup. Do you have like a Facebook um, fan page or anything? Um, you know what? I don't uh, really just my Instagram is the best place for all my work. Okay. I need to get, a, I need to get a fan page going. <laughs> Yes, you do. But I'll talk to you about once we're done recording. I will bug you about that right after we're done. I know you should. You really should because I've been meaning to do it for a while, and I just I don't know. And I'm in quarantine. I have no excuses. Mm -hmm. But where but, can what's your Instagram though? Where can people find you? And what I'll what I'll do? I should have asked you this earlier because I would have had it like up in your picture already. But what I'll do is I'll plug it in there after, so when the video comes out, they'll see your IG thing. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, my Instagram is at Mackenzie, M-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E, -E, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, M-U-A. And yeah, so it's just Mackenzie Kelly, M-U-A. But uh, yeah, that's I, I'm going to get that fan page going, though. And hopefully people can find me on there. Yeah, Instagram's really like the only place I have all my stuff. But uh, yikes. <laughs> awesome. Well, follow her on instagram her facebook page is coming soon because she has no reason not to do it because she's quarantined <laughs> and i'm gonna I do have all my stuff up on there definitely like check it out oh yeah definitely but this was a great time and people she's really gonna be she's gonna be a horror fan before this year's up i'll give you we got to give her a few months she's gonna be a horror fan like a really really true horror fan by the time this year is up your story is crazy though it is it's nuts just because you dealt with all that. So I, I understand, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse because I love this genre <laughs> so much and it's such an awesome genre. And there's honestly, like I said, there's so many amazing people in this, in the horror realm. And it's like the most welcoming community that nobody, like nobody judges anybody, race, gender, sexual orientation. None of that even matters with horror. It shouldn't matter in general, but I'm just saying like with horror, nobody cares. And it's just, everybody just loves horror. Like that's it. It's just, Hey, you've seen this cool, cool mask, cool costume. This is a cool movie. Hey, I didn't like this movie, but it's not like a big issue. And it's like I said, it's fun. So yes. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for having me. I actually um, believe that I'll probably be a huge horror fan by Halloween. We'll say not even the end of the year. Halloween, I'll be like Over. full force into it. <laughs> We're going to check back with you on that one too. <laughs> this you is should, really yeah. No, I'm excited. You'll have to keep up with me. Um, you know, because I'm going to be working on more sets. I'll be working on some more films. So it'd be cool to like check back in and let you know how everything's going. Oh, definitely. Let you know how I feel after watching some horror movies. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. And I guess people, I mean, you, for my listeners, you should know where you can find me now. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Podbean. I'm on Spotify. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, but now you get to view me too with my awesome green screen and my awesome people that get on here. 
Horror with Search 30. I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. The Facebook group is for anybody and everybody to share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects, YouTube channels, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, anything. As long as it's horror related, funny memes, whatever. I don't care. The page is more so you guys can see what I'm doing, what I'm up to. I post in both as far as that goes, but it gets lost in the group. The page, only I'm allowed to post on the page. So you could just like the page and kind of just read up, watch the videos. Um, what else am I on? If you ever want to be on the podcast, shoot me an email, horror with sir, horror with sir dot sturdy. And that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. And my time is East Coast time, people, in case I forget to tell you. <laughs> my time is East Coast time, so that's what I go by. I will get better with that. I usually tell people, but I'm just saying East Coast time. And if you're a gamer on the PS4, sir underscore sturdy. Um, if you want to watch me play some games, uh, my Twitch is horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And I think that's about it. Um, I had a great time. Again, thank you again, Mackenzie. Yeah, thank you. I had so much fun. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.